Good afternoon all, CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Monday afternoon, November 16th. We're looking at the SPY ETF's market profile here on Window Trader. And the Bulls with an incredible strong finish as in the last literally minute of the day, rip higher with a price probe, volume which was pretty light um, throughout the whole day. Right now, after this push up in M and the after hours, I you know it's below average right now, but it's a good chance we're going to do average or possibly above it. The only thing we have is the high. Well, we have the price probe, which is D's high now. Um, but the only other thing other than that, we have the high and the low of the day. We have the gap that held. They tried to push it down. We only end eight wide. It was a very it was a good day. I had a very good day. Um, it got a little difficult to call later in the day. Um, but I had a good day. I stayed out of trouble. The room had a good day. So let's go over my trades. What transpired? Just quickly, triple Qs. They go out. Also, no, they don't have a price probe. And they got it. They go out 11 wide. They battled in and out of their three-day balance all day. But they closed above it. So I'd call that balance to up. And the righty, not the, uh, yeah, the uh, Russell never got its all-time high. But... Held the gap just like we did. So all these indices are in pretty good shape going forward as they attempt to get their all-time highs. As far as my trades today, I took a long and A period. We got below the opening, started pushing down. I got it to where it was good risk reward. I, now I am trading this Friday's options, right, this week, at least Monday through Wednesday, this Friday. I took a 359 call play, and that trade worked out very well for me as it got down, tapered, went back up. My next trade was in B period. We did take out the day's high. Didn't start really getting any acceleration. Took a short play. Took a short play. Did the 364 puts. Didn't stay married to them because I wasn't sure what was going to happen if we were going to have single prints. Initially, it didn't look like we were. It came back in, took them off before the opening, and that worked out. Then my one of my best trades of the day was C period. I got long against the single prints, 361 calls, not a lot, but when it went up, I took some off, came back down, put it back on. I kept my core position, which was not very big, but actually rode it all the way up. So here's Monday's all-time high from last week. I had destinations. So in C period, I took small off at B's high. Then I took off small at um, the afternoon rally high from last Monday. Held it in D. When E started, couldn't get traction. I took a little more off at the afternoon rally high or just below it. And then when E took out D's low, I went flat. So actually it showed some good patience there. Held on and made a nice trade. Then in F. Now I'm looking for an afternoon pullback. We flush out. I think this is just a week longs. Now we had a chance for three sets of single prints. All three filled. So the trend day did not hold. So when F came down, I took a long against the opening. That worked out. Now, we continued then to flush. I did not take a short. We flushed an H, a G and H. I did take a short in I, thinking we were going to finally take out the days, days low and get the gap. It was only 20 puts, but I did take it. It went against me. Now, I knew we had taken out the initial balance high. Usually, you don't take out both of them. But we, had, we hadn't taken out either of the overnight highs or low, which we never did on the day. So I only took a 20 lot, and it went back up against me. It started going against me. So when Jay started and came in, I bought 100 calls. I still had the 20 puts, but I bought 100 calls right against B's low and rode those up, stopped the one time frame. Now, it was an innovative trade. If we had taken out H's low, I would have been out on those calls. But it never got close to that. Took out I's high, rode them up, got flat on everything. I still had the 20 puts. But what I lost on the 20 puts, I more than made up for it on the 100 calls and took everything off just about right around um, the opening and half back at the time. Because it just never, in fact, half back was a little lower. It didn't get the acceleration I wanted. And then my only other trade after that, because like I said, we didn't get much of a push up in J or K. I was thinking about doing an afternoon rally high and taking a short. L did a reversal ball. I actually did one short in M when we took out um, L's high that worked out. I was going to do another one. Thank goodness. I thought at 355, if it pushed, I was going to do it. I didn't. 
I took it off and a good thing I did as M ripped and probed. So, um, oh, look at this bad tick here in N period, <laughs> all the way down. Look at that one. So they're going to show that as an overnight low, and that's I will not count that. Right now, the overnight low would be wherever N's low is up here. So let's go over destinations for tomorrow. First one on the upside. We only have three destinations. That is today's high of 362.59. Today's high, 362.59. Then we have 364.38, last Monday's high, weekly high, all-time high, and 366.77, the pre-market all-time high. For the downside, well, we now have a price probe. That's D's high, 362.25. We don't know if it's accepted or rejected to tomorrow morning. will be our first downside destination. Then we have today's low, believe it or not, right? We don't have anything. After this price probe, we have nothing to today's low of 359.59 and fill in the gap at 358.90. And then 357.81, the price probe from Friday. So M period is going to be incredibly important tomorrow for me because if we open inside of M's range and this price probe fails, there's nothing to lean on until we get, again, we'll see what our overnight low is, but we were only eight wide. So there's nothing really to lean on. So if the probe fails, we could trade M's range. So it's going to be incredibly important for the buyers to either gap higher again or at least hold the price probe, as far as I'm concerned, tomorrow morning. And then on the charts, oh, I did the wrong one, apologize. On the charts, monthly, four month balance, we're above inside month up. In fact, inside month up is pretty uh, impressive right now, right? 354.02. We close at 362.57. So last week we battled it a lot. Well, all of a sudden we're eight and a half dollars above it. Pretty impressive. And we're above the previous all time high from September. Weekly. Weekly is up. I called weekly up. It's still up. So even though monthly's balance, it's an inside month up, weekly's up, and the daily's up. So two out of the three time frames are up. Yes, we're inside last week's Monday's range, but I use this as a four-day balance. We're out of it. It's up. So now the buyers have everything in their power to attempt to go at some point and take out last Monday's all-time high and get the overnight all-time high. I have a lot of people that Hit me up on Twitter asking me, is this an afternoon rally high or is this this, this, that? I don't tweet much during the day. I am giving the 200 traders in my room my full attention. 20 bucks a month, folks. You get live streaming of my profile and play-by-play -play all day. Don't understand. Come check it out. It's certainly worth its weight in gold. Have a great night and we'll speak prior to the opening tomorrow.